Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and it is Friday, so it is weigh-in day. We're gonna chat about my week, a major NSV check off the bucket list moment this last weekend and we're going to talk about this week's Weight Watchers workshop topic. So if you're excited, give this video a big huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed, your bell notification is turned on because I do a weigh-in video every single Friday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Down in the description box, I will link nutrition coaching. I recommend personalized macros and calories I followed my macros and calories to lose and maintain a 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things and come join our Facebook group. It's free, it's supportive, it's amazing. We would love to have you. It's all down in that description box. So let's jump into my week, my NSV, my weigh-in, and the Weight Watchers workshop topic. Friday friends. I hope you had an amazing, amazing week. I had a pretty darn good week. I just am so excited to share with you my big NSV or the thing I checked off my bucket list this last weekend. So on Saturday with my boot camp group, we did the Seven Falls hike in Sabino Canyon and outside of Tucson, Arizona. Now, if you remember when Amy was here visiting from New York, we went to Sabino Canyon and we took their tram tour, which basically just drove us through the entire national park, told us about the areas, the different hikes, and on that tram tour, I heard about this Seven Falls hike. And I specifically said in that video that this is a hike on my list to do. Well, I was going to go do this hike, and then my boot camp group decided to do it together, and I was so excited. So this last Saturday, we did the Sabino Canyon Seven Falls hike. Now, what it means, so first, Seven Falls basically means that there's seven different water passages, seven different falls that you have to go through slash get to on this hike. So on this hike itself, we actually had to cross through six different sets of waterways. This meant traversing rocks, walking through water. My feet were wet the entire hike. And then the seventh fall, the final fall, is this absolutely beautiful, glorious falls. Several levels, so incredibly beautiful. It didn't feel like you were in Arizona at all. I felt kind of like, honestly, I was back in the Pacific Northwest. It was that mountainous and glorious and it smelled like the Pacific Northwest. It was absolutely beautiful, but yet we got the amazing warm, sunny Arizona weather. And this hike was said to be a total of about 8.4 miles. No, 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 no. This hike ended up being 10 miles, which is absolutely crazy to me. So I'm not sure where they're getting 8.4 miles, but it was about five miles in and five miles out. So definitely over the eight miles and truthfully the longest hike that I have ever taken. Probably one of the most beautiful hikes I've taken, but definitely the longest, but it was well worth it. This waterfall was absolutely beautiful and glorious. In fact, the whole hike was amazing. There were cactus everywhere. There were beautiful streams and flowing water and just the sound of the water just made Made me so happy and then to actually make it to the falls was incredible we had a little snack had a snack there and just really enjoyed the falls grabbed a group photo it was really really amazing and I was so happy to be able to complete this because I'll tell you two years ago and 140 pounds heavier there's no way I could have ever done this hike absolutely no way and in fact on the way back from the on the way back from the falls my legs were actually getting a little bit tired so I and did end up taking a Tylenol which definitely help me make it through the final five miles but I'm so proud of myself that I completed this hike and what I'm even more proud about is how much progress I've made in my endurance and my cardiovascular levels overall so during this hike I stayed in zone one I'm gonna go ahead and pop up here on the screen what the different zones of your heart rate mean there's zone one zone two three four and five so five is when your heart rate is at its peak at its max and zone one is when your heart rate is at its lowest and I did the majority of this hike, which by the way, was the most elevation gain I've ever done in a hike, mainly in zone one. So what that means is that my endurance and my cardiovascular health is incredible. Even Julia, my boot camp instructor was like, there's no way you stayed in zone one because we did climb almost 1200 feet in elevation gain, but I have worked so hard on building up my cardiovascular health and my endurance that this is another big non-scale victory for me. 
absolutely incredible that I was able to complete this hike and do it where my heart rate stayed pretty low. In order for it to be considered cardio, your average heart rate needs to be around 125 or higher. I got to 125 during the hike, but overall my heart rate was very low, which doesn't indicate that I didn't work hard. It indicates that my cardiovascular cardiovascular health is in optimal shape, which makes me so happy. I mean, I can't tell you how special and important that alone is to me. I don't care about the scale. I care about all of these milestones that I'm completing on my health journey, like 10 mile hike, staying in zone one during this incredibly, in, this incredibly hard hike. I'm just so proud of myself. This is definitely one of those moments where I feel most proud. So after the hike, we went to this place called Zen Burger in Tucson and had a burger. It was delicious. It was wonderful. We stopped at Trader Joe's. We just had an amazing time. I, these girls are such a special part of my life. I'm so grateful for discovering boot camp, and I'm so grateful for the amazing friendships that I've made. It really just was such a great weekend. Just such a great weekend. I did decide to take Sunday as a rest day and then back at boot camp Monday and completed another amazing, amazing week of exercise, food, drinking my water, focusing on my health. And in fact, tomorrow I am running a 5K with my boot camp group. This is here in Saweta where I live, and this is the pecan run. So basically what this is, is we run through the pecan fields, which if you didn't know, Green Valley, Arizona is the pecan city. This is one of the biggest manufacturers of pecans in the area. So we have a lot of pecan fields. So we get to run through those, and then they're serving us a delicious breakfast. So I'm really looking forward to that, checking another 5 off my list, spending another great day with my boot camp friends. I'm just really, truly feeling so happy and blessed and so grateful that we made this move to Arizona. Best decision ever. So I had a really good week. I had an active week. Let's talk about my weigh-in, but before we do, we I, mean, I want to talk with you about this week's Weight Watchers workshop topic, and that is going out to eat. Try these stay on track tips. Now, a few months ago, I put out a video on how I navigate eating out and losing weight. I will link that video down below for you. I shared with you some of my tried and true tips and things that I do when I eat out that I did while I lost weight and while I'm continuing to maintain my weight loss. But Weight Watchers has some amazing tips for us as well. You can still eat out and lose weight. So try this. If you map out moves and make decisions ahead of time, you can save up weekly in rollover points leading up to the meal for more flexibility. You can look up the menu or ask your host and pre-track your meal. Going to a friend's offer to bring a dish that's low in points. Eat a low point snack before leaving home to help you stick to your plan. Or maybe you have to make on the spot decisions. Start with a brothy super salad or choose zero point foods as a main to make room for drinks and dessert. Low Zero in on low points, code words like grilled, split an entree with a friend, take half home or order an app as your main dish, or use an appetizer plate at the buffet to help you keep your portions in check. Some of these tips and tricks are things that I actually shared in my out to eat video as well, especially the sharing a meal with a friend or even getting a to-go box and boxing up half of your meal. You also need to make a backup plan. Almost out of points, weeklies too, before you even order your entree, here's some things to try. Step one, remind yourself it's okay if you eat more than intended, but don't totally give up. Step two, decide about how many extra points you're willing to spend and order accordingly. And step three, when you get home, track the meal and plan and pre-track what low point foods you'll eat the next day. Really the big takeaway from this is, is just get back on track the next meal or the next day. Don't let one mess up derail you for the rest of the week, the rest of the month. It's okay to go over your points. It's okay to go over your calories. Nobody gained weight because they went out to dinner and went over their points or calories. It's what you do the rest of the week that matters. Have you ever had a day that played out exactly like you wanted it to play out? No, it's very unlikely that everything is going to go smooth all the time and that every day and every meal out is going to look exactly like we think it needs to look. We still want to plan ahead, but we do want to give ourselves some grace and allow us to enjoy our life. If you don't allow yourself to eat out and eat the foods that you enjoy when you eat out, that's not sustainable. You're not going to be able to maintain that long term. And what happens when we do something that's not sustainable to lose weight and we stop doing those that something, we gain our weight back. That's why it's important to lose weight in a sustainable way. And remember, whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do that to maintain that weight loss. And that includes eating out and ordering your favorite foods. If you're going to a friend's birthday dinner or a vacation, navigate it the same way. 
Make sure you're getting in your protein. Make sure you're ordering a healthy option most of the time, but allow yourself to enjoy your favorite foods as well. If you overindulge, if you overenjoy, just regroup and start fresh the next meal or the next day. Don't let it derail you for days and weeks. This is where we can really get into trouble. And like I said, we don't wanna turn down invitations to events, vacations, parties, out to eat because we're on a weight loss journey. We need to learn how to navigate those things so again, we can enjoy our life and do what is sustainable for us long term. Again, I will link my video I did on how I navigate eating out on a weight loss journey down below for you. Now let's talk about my weigh-in because this was interesting. What happened during this week post that really big hike on Saturday. So for funsies, and actually not even for funsies, I weigh myself daily, but for extra funsies on Sunday, I stepped on the scale just curious what my weight would do post that hike. I will say to side note, my legs were pretty sore and tired. I was really glad that I took Sunday as a rest day. So when I got on the scale Sunday morning, my weight was up two pounds, two pounds from that hike on Saturday. There's no way I gained two pounds, especially when I hiked 10 miles, burned 1700 calories and definitely didn't eat in a surplus. It was just a fluctuation from the hike, from the soreness, from the exertion on my body. So I was it was very interesting to see the scale spike up and I'm really happy that I've healed my relationship with the scale. I didn't let that get to me at all. I actually anticipated potentially even more of a gain on the scale. So I just brushed it off and moved on with my week, did the things I know that I need to do to be healthy and to continue to maintain my weight loss. And as the week progressed, my weight steadily started to decline. I never had another spike up in my weight. And actually when I stepped on the scale today, I am down 0.4 pounds. So I lost another 0.4 this week. I actually cycled my calories this week as well, cycled my carbs this week. And I'm wondering if that's what attributed to this little bit of a loss on the scale. I do have a video on calorie cycling and carb cycling. I'll link those videos for you. This is something that I'm trying, that I'm working with with my coach on Copilot. If you miss Wednesdays, what I eat in a day, I share that I've been utilizing the Copilot app for my workouts and I love it so much. I absolutely love it. I actually sent pictures of my hike to my coach Kayleen and she was just elated that I was able to complete a 10 mile hike. She loves seeing all the pictures. I'm really loving Copilot. It is such an amazing app. It actually allows you to speak with a coach who does your nutrition and gives you a personalized workout to you specifically, whether you can go to a gym, work out at home, don't work out at all. It's an amazing app and I'll link it again down below for you because they are offering a free two week trial. So you can really try out the app, see if you like it. I have signed up permanently, I love it. Best decision I made was to fire Brenda and move over to Copilot. So I'll link Copilot down below for you with that free two week trial. But I am really proud of myself for the 0.4 loss. I'm proud of myself for completing that 10 mile hike. I'm just really proud of myself in general for being able to not only navigate a weight loss journey, but navigate a maintenance journey and be successful. So let me know down below, how was your week? Did, did you gain, did you lose? Also let me know if you downloaded the Copilot app and what you think of it so far. Let me know everything down below. And if you enjoyed another weigh in, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on so you never miss a future video. I will link Copilot down below for you. I will link those videos, nutrition coaching, as well as links and discounts to my favorite things. And come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you have an amazing, amazing day and I will see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye.